Hey, this is Alan Mitchell with Cruise Reports uh, Tip of the Week. We're going to look at creating a dynamic parameter and look at all the bits and pieces of that parameter. And so let's go and get started with this. Here at Symphony, we do customized Crystal Report training and also we build Crystal Reports as well. We'll use your data to build the reports and while we do the training as well. And we'll ask you what kind of reports that you want to build using your data as we do the training. It speeds up the learning curve and also uh, you have your starting a report day one from scratch, build it to, be, to fit your system or fit your needs. So if you'd like to do that, if you'd like for us to do the training for you or build reports for you, contact Tom Zadell for more information. Tom's information is on this contact page with his phone number as well and you can contact me and down at the bottom you can see the, um, the website if you want to see uh, prior tips. And I just realized this is a brand new website so there's not that many tips on there. We're going to put on there as many as we can so that uh, you can cover as many topics as you want. Um, and we'll get there as soon as we can. Now, if you have a question on anything or you'd like to, uh, for me to cover other subjects in the future, if you would, just shoot me an email and say, hey, now can you cover this topic in the future? And I'll do that as, as quickly as I can. So let's go and get started. We're going to look at uh, build a dynamic parameter. So set up a parameter, a dynamic parameter. Let's go to our crystal report. We've got one already set up here. And uh, we're looking at, this is actually the database on this is the one that comes when you buy crystal reports, this extreme database, and that's what I'm using here. And we're looking at um, seven bikes for seven brothers, which is actually company, invoice numbers. And um, we're going to go and we're going to add a parameter to this. We're going to look at, I want to be able to pick and choose the um, companies like Seven Bikes for Seven Brothers is a company or customer name. So I'm going to go over to the right hand side in the Field Explorer and I'm going to build a, a parameter here. So I'm going to right click on it and select new and here's our screen and we're going to call this uh, it says my parameters by default. This is what's going to show up in this box. I'm going to put a company and then a company is a string so I'm going to leave the type of string and also that by default it's going to go to a static parameter. Now in a future session we'll look at building static parameters and also upkeeping the pick, upkeeping the pick list for a static parameter. Right now we're going to get dynamic. So I'm going to do the drop down right next to the static where the list of values is and I'm going to select dynamic. All right and the screen changes. So the, the prompt group text, what this is for is if you have a cascading parameter, a dynamic cascading parameter, which guess what? That's going to be a future presentation as well. Uh, if you have a cascading dynamic parameter, and let's say it goes uh, high to low, you're going to have country, and then down below that you're going to pick a state, and down below that you're going to pick a city in that side of the state. Um, you could put up here your prompt group text would be country slash state slash city. So all it's doing is allowing you 255 characters in which to describe that parameter. Now we can choose a new data source and basically we're choosing a data source for this parameter. So down here there's a little folder. I'm going to click on that. It's going to show me the fields that are inside this report. Or not field report inside this database. Whether it's on report or not, it's going to be inside the database. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to pick a company. Or actually, I'm going to pick customer name. And let me change it up here because I said customer name didn't, and didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to put customer. See, it's really easy to change your name up here if you need to. Customer name. And I'm going to delete the one we have here. I didn't mean to do that. So what I can do is I've got customer ID highlighted. And I can hit the little X there. It goes away. So it's, it's going to allow me to be flexible with that. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit the little folder up here again. I'm going to select customer name. And then if there was a like customer ID on here, I could actually put that on there as well. In fact, I will. I'll go down here and click that. And I'll put the customer ID up here as well. So if that would mean anything to someone with customer ID, it could flip them back and forth. And then I'm also going to go over here and click to create a parameter so that it actually will um, add the parameter to the report. Now let's go down to the bottom on this so it shows uh, show on the viewer panel. Now over here on the left hand side where it says groups, parameters, and find, this is the viewer panel. So on this one I can make, allow it to be editable or I left, or actually I click on that, do not show it. Do it read only or make it edible. I'm going to leave it edible. That was the default on that. And by default, where it says prompt text, it has enter customer name. 
by default it's going to put the word enter and whatever you typed inside of this box where it says name. Now this also is a field that's 255 characters and if you want to change what it says here because this is your opportunity to tell the user what this parameter is about. So you may want to use enter customer name that would be fine with you or you can say select customer. Whatever you want. Like again, this is one where um, we're allowing them to put on there. Now, this one is one where if they don't pick anything, you know, the parameters of the past, in fact, in early versions of Crystal, if you didn't pick a parameter value, you got nothing. But on this one, I'm going to show you how if you pick nothing, you get everything. So I'm going to put on here select customer or leave blank and receive I before E except after C. Receive um, all customers. All right. Now we go down and I'm gonna keep scrolling down here. And the next this is sort order. You can do it by ascending value or by descending or by your know, descending description or descending description. We're gonna leave it by ascending value. Prompt with description only. Not really that false. It's going to prompt us with a value. Now, this is where the, it comes very important because I was telling you before, if you want to pick nothing on your parameter and you're going to get everything, this is where it comes in. So right here where it says op optional prompt, I want to click on this and change that to true. It says changing the prompt to be optional may break existing formulas. Refer to the online help for details. On this one, we're not going to. It's pretty simple. Go ahead and just click OK here. We made that true. Now, are you going to allow the uh, the whoever is running the report to have multiple values? Right now, there's no. So we're going to change that to true, so they can pick more than one value. And then, or you can allow one value, multiple values, or discrete values. Or you go into a range, and you can have true in all these, where you can have one value, you can have a range of values, or you can have multiple values, which a range is multiple, but you can pick and choose which are ones you want. We're going to leave it as multiple values uh, and discrete values true, and leave it at that. And I keep scrolling on down, and um, here we have and that, that's into that. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. Now, like any other parameter, if you notice up here on the right-hand side on the Field Explorer, the, there's not a check mark on this parameter. It's not being used at all. Now, if I go ahead and I refresh this, it's not even going to ask for that. Now, if you have it on a system like um, Business Objects, the, uh, the, the Object Explorer, or using Lawson LBI, that parameter is on this report, so it's actually going to ask you for a value on that parameter, even though the parameter is not filtering anything on this. But let's go up here. We're going to filter this report, and the best way to do this in Crystal is use the um, the select expert. So let's go down here to the filter, the select expert. This used to be a little marble hands in the past, so we're going to click on that. We're going to scroll down, and we're going to find customer name. We're going to click OK with that. And we're going to do the drop down here, and where the customer value is going to be equal to our parameter. So as I drop down here, notice that the parameter shows up. Now it's a string parameter, so it's going to show up with the string fields. Has this been a date parameter, a number parameter, or a currency parameter, or a boolean parameter? It would not have shown up here because it's not a string. But since this parameter is a string, it's showing up these values. So I'm going to click customer in there, and I'm going to click OK. Now. It's going to kick this in gear. Now, I told you before that uh, if I pick nothing, I'm going to get everything. So let's try that. I'm not going to push any of these values over here. I'm going to click OK. And I'm getting everything, which means it worked. Now, if I scroll to the very end of this, there's 194 of these. Now I'm going to scroll back. Now I'm going to show you what's happening in the background. So I'm going to go up here to report on the menu bar. And then go down to select formulas and select record. And look what's happened. Now I didn't put this in here, the what the portion, the excuse me, the portion of portion that text accent here. The portion that I did was I told it the customer name to be equal to the uh, customer name parameter. Now since we did the optional prompt, it actually would in here it says uh, the, if the parameter customer name does not have a value, give me everything. If it does have a value, give me the name of the parameter that matches the customer name. 
So that's what's happening in the background. So we'll go ahead and click the save here again. And now I'm going to refresh this. Prompt for a new parameter. And click OK. And it's taking its little, sweet little time here running. We love that, don't we? Now, it shouldn't take this long to run. Just realize I'm running a virtual session, so it's taking a little longer here. This thing will run, well, I was going to say lickety split. Is, uh, i got to leave that stuff alone. This thing's going to run really quickly. I promise this is going to run really quickly. So let's go and pick a few. Let's put uh, seven bikes for seven brothers. We're going to drop that in there. And what's happening here, and let's grab the Alley Cat Cycles as well. Pop it over. And if you look at this, you see that there's pages, or there's little numbers here. If I do a drop down, it's telling me there's actually two values, two pages of parameter values. So as I scroll, I put on number page, leave it on page one. I scroll down to the bottom of this. I'm gonna pick various bikes, jump it over. Now what I'm gonna do is go down and do a drop down here and pick page number two. Page number two has a different set of values on it. Let's grab rupture terrain. And let's grab one more. How about a uh, save on cycles? And push that over there as well. And I'm going to click OK. And so all we're going to have is the ones we pick. So up here to the select, we have seven bikes for seven brothers, the alley cats, Barry's bikes, rough terrain, source one cycles, and um, I guess that was it. So if you look at this, those are the values that we picked. Now how do I change a dynamic parameter? Well, you got to go back to the parameter itself. So I'm going to go to the Field Explorer. I'm going to right-click on this. Actually, I'm going to select it. I'm going to click Edit. And from here, I can go back and I can change. Like I say, I'm going to leave it dynamic. But um, if I wanted to, to um, take the description off, I can just click here and delete it. Um, if I wanted to, say, give me a range, I can change it here. So it's like any other parameter, dynamic or static. I can go back and, and change the option values here if you want to. So I'm going to cancel this, and there's our dynamic parameter. So our steps were you, um, have, your, you have your report ready, you right-click on the parameter fields, you like, let's do that, you click new, you change your list of values to dynamic. From here, you're going to pick whatever field you want to filter by. You select that, and I'm, I'm not going to save this. I'm going to pick a contact. I'll ah, have it last yourselves, which is a eh, number. Actually, it's a currency. But then you have this information. You click to create it as a parameter. Then you go down, and from here, you pick your options. Now, this is one where I wouldn't select option prompt because this is a value. I'm going to let them pick a value. So by one, I'm going to cancel on this. But those are the steps. So again, let me go back to our PowerPoint presentation. And let me start this thing up a little bit. And I'm going to jump you over there to uh, our last page. So if you uh, want some more information on either building, have some reports written for you, or the training, you can contact Tom Zadell. Here's his number and email address. And here's my number and email address as well. Um, I have nothing to do with sales, so you contact Tom. But if you have a question on a crisp report, you can email me. If I, you know, I'll uh, check emails at the end of the day. I'm used to doing training or writing reports. So at the end of the day, I will look at those emails. And I'll try to answer your questions as quickly as I can. And then if you would like me to cover a subject in the future, email that to me too as well. And 